I'm Pete. I'm Stephanie, and this is The Cool Part Show, our show all about innovative 3D printed parts. Today on the show, we're talking about a plug. But this is a plug that's designed to work at 10,000 feet underground and at temperatures exceeding 400 degrees Fahrenheit. Technology for geothermal power on this episode of The Cool Parts Show. This episode of The Cool Part Show is brought to you by Carpenter Additive. We're at the company's powder production facility in Athens, Alabama. Specifically, we are standing on top of the Z1, the company's largest vacuum atomizer for producing metal powders. Want to know how to make metal powder for additive manufacturing? Stick around after the episode. Quick note about the episode you're about to see. We're talking about a uh, downhole device for deep wells. We will not be able to show you the inside of the cool part. The inventor, who you're going to meet, wanted to keep that information secret. We're going to honor that request. But we wanted to share this story anyway, in part because of the connection to geothermal energy. This is an example of how additive manufacturing is bringing new design possibilities, including some hidden designs um, and enabling things like different sources of power. Enjoy. Welcome to The Cool Parts Show. Thanks for joining us. If you like the show, make sure to subscribe on YouTube to get notified about new episodes. You can also find out about new videos earlier by signing up for our all access newsletter at thecoolpartshow.com. Today on the show, we are looking at this part for geothermal energy, which uses a clever 3D printed geometry to allow for mechanical expansion and collapse. This is the Diamond Seal. It was created by a company that is applying oil and gas knowledge and expertise to the needs and challenges of geothermal power, which are the same but different. For example, uh, the need to plug a hole for shaft repair, for example. The way this is done in the oil and gas industry won't necessarily apply in a geothermal well where the operating conditions are much more aggressive. So let's talk about geothermal energy for a moment. This is energy from the earth. Uh, similar to oil and gas, you are drilling a well deep underground, but instead of extracting petroleum or some other substance, what you're after is the hot water or the steam that's coming up from these underground reservoirs. You can use that steam to drive a turbine, do various different things. And so like you say, Pete, oil and gas and geothermal have similarities in terms of the drilling technology, the downhole technology that's used, but geothermal is operating at much higher temperatures. And so in oil and gas, a plug like this could be made from plastic, could be made from rubber, but those materials aren't going to work for geothermal with these higher operating temperatures. So let's hear about that from the inventor of this part. Here is Ken Havlinek, CEO and co-founder of Downhole Emerging Technologies. Geothermal power as it stands today is an untapped resource that, that we could start to develop. Um, and the promise that it has for our country is, in all, in all fairness, in, in my opinion, it is the only green energy, clean energy, that really truly can meet our needs. But the challenge is the rock that we need to drill into is extremely hot. It's in excess of 400 degrees Fahrenheit. So the challenge is how do we take oil and gas know-how where we drill holes in the ground and we produce hydrocarbons on a daily basis? How do we use that technology but increase the temperature rating of all the technologies that do this so that we can drill into this superheated rock. So geothermal is something that the Department of Energy is interested in. They actually ran a contest challenging manufacturers to create geothermal equipment using additive manufacturing. Ken's company, Downhole Emerging Technologies, was one of the winners of that contest with this part. Uh, the contest was the American Made Geothermal Challenge from the Department of Energy. The intent was, encouraging technology development to help realize the promise of geothermal power. And technology development specifically focused on additive manufacturing, which I think is interesting for this part because at the outset, Ken didn't know he was designing something that was ultimately going to be 3D printed. Right. He knew how he wanted to solve the problem. It's just that uh, he was limited in the geometry he was able to imagine in part because he was limited by what he knew about the available manufacturing options. You know, when I start visualizing solutions to any problem, I'm always thinking, well, how am I going to make this? So for the first part of this project, the solutions that me and my team were coming up with were solutions that could be manufactured in a machine shop because that's what we were visualizing. 
our original design was not a, a bracelet shape. It was just a very large cylinder with a bulge in the middle. And when you compress it, the bulge increases. When you when you stretch it, the bulge decreases. Same same invention, same concept, but just a really big cylinder. And we ended up putting uh, grooves on the inside of this that were like strain relief grooves that improved the performance. Uh, but we couldn't figure out a way of making those grooves. So they were just simply not machinable. And then we realized that additive manufacturing could, could print that entire part for us, no problem. But then somewhere in the middle of this whole program, uh, quite frankly, and I'll say a eureka moment happened. So this is the form he got to. Enabled by additive manufacturing, this was produced by Proto Labs through laser powder bed fusion. We can't show you what's going on inside the part, like inside of these wall areas here, but how it works is this. So imagine this going down the hole on a mandrel that it travels along pre-stretched, pre-stretched so that the inner diameter is a little bigger, the outer diameter is a little smaller. That provides the clearance to go down the hole to the point where it, it needs to operate, needs to plug the hole. When it gets to that point deep in the hole, then it is compressed so that the inner diameter gets smaller, outer diameter gets bigger. These accordion ridges, like the ridges on the inside, press against the mandrel, the ridges on the outside press against the hole, and in that way, it seals the hole, seals it in place. And that shape change, that uh, diameter change between the pre-stretched and the, the compressed condition, the extent of that change is facilitated by geometry on the inside of this part that is possible because of additive manufacturing. I truly believe that the eureka moment that we had was because our brains were starting to get rewired a little bit and suddenly we started visualizing new solutions to the same problem that now included additive manufacturing as a manu as a potential process that we could use, not just mills and lays and, and, and molding. And once you start thinking about additive manufacturing capabilities and what they can do, suddenly you start thinking of new ideas. And rather than this very big cylinder that was quite frankly machined with just a couple of features that couldn't be machined, now all of a sudden we started thinking of things that couldn't be manufactured at all other than uh, using additive manufacturing. And we came up with a solution uh, for this problem that uses only uh, stainless steel, basically. No rubber, no plastic, only high temperature materials. And we were able to solve this problem where we can now seal in this super hot well using a device that's easily de deployable and easily retrievable. All right, I think we got this. This is the diamond seal. Its purpose is to plug a hole in a geothermal well. Uh, the same function is performed in oil and gas drilling, but the operating conditions are much more aggressive in geothermal power. The seal was developed by Downhole Emerging Technologies, and initially they thought they were gonna be able to machine the design that they had in mind. But then they learned about additive manufacturing, learned about the geometric possibilities, and ultimately this seal was 3D printed by Proto Labs using laser powder bed fusion. Additive manufacturing makes possible this accordion form that is aided by some geometry that is inside the part. Uh, and the result is that its uh, dimensions can be changed significantly by pre-stretching it first to get it down the hole, uh, compressing it to expand the diameter so that it can plug the hole, and then it can be stretched again so it can be extracted from the hole after it's done so that it doesn't have to be drilled away. That's it for this episode of The Cool Part Show. If you like the show, leave us a like, leave us a comment, subscribe to the channel on YouTube. As a reminder, you can also sign up for our all-access newsletter at thecoolpartshow.com for early access to new episodes like this one. If you have developed a 3D printed part that performs like a really specific purpose, like plugging a geothermal well, the more specific the better. We love this. Tell us about it. We might do an episode about it. Cool parts at additivemanufacturing.media. Thanks for watching. This episode's brought to you by Carpenter Additive. We are at the company's powder production facility in Athens, Alabama, and we are standing on top of an atomizer. The Z1 is Carpenter Technologies largest vacuum atomizer, and it is the heart of the process for making additive manufacturing metal powder here at Carpenter Additive. 
This facility is capable of producing up to 18,000 pounds of metal powder per day. Plant manager Jordan Ralph talked us through the process. So an atomizer is a piece of equipment that uh, is capable of melting and pouring molten metal into the stream of high pressure um, gas uh, that turns that molten metal into tiny, tiny droplets that ultimately cool and form uh, our powder, which looks like uh, gray dust. So to start our process and the uh, ultimate end-to-end -end solution that we have here, um, we bring in raw materials um, all the way down to individual elements, so nickel, cobalt, chrome, um, moly, niobium. We bring all of those raw materials into the shop. We utilize those materials uh, to build charges that go into the uh, atomizer. Um, as you walk that flow path, you run through our charge makeup area. Uh, where all of the materials are weighed out uh, in very exact uh, quantities. Uh, that ensures that we're able to hit our customer specifications uh, and hold the tight tolerances that we're looking for on a chemistry perspective. Um, from there, the material is flown to the top of the atomizer and charged into the furnace. As the material is produced, it's poured out and is collected at the bottom of the atomizer. Uh, the material is then uh, taken and transferred into a bulk container uh, for processing through the rest of the uh, value stream. The next stop for any of our as atomized powder would be uh, the screener. Uh, so that will remove the coarse portion of the uh, um, powder. Uh, from there, we take it through air classification. It takes the fine portion of the uh, particle size distribution out and makes the uh, final cut for uh, an additive material, like a 10 to 45. From there, we stack up all of those individual lots and put them into the 12,000 pound blender uh, to make the single homogenous blends. Um, at that point, we are able to pack in any configuration that the customer is looking for, whether that be drums, bottles, um, powder trace hoppers. You know, we've got a lot, of, a lot of options to meet customers' needs there. The atomization capability and all of the powder um, capabilities gives us a unique um, you know, position where we're actually able to uh, produce the powder, run testing uh, through additive machines, all the way through hip and heat treat, um, do final testing on those products and then make additional changes or um, try to optimize, you know, things like our uh, chemistry or sizing so that we uh, ultimately can uh, serve our customers better.